Hello everyone. Before I go to the to the discussion of the Rim podcast, I know there was a the the we have a bad hurricane. Yeah, we did. went through, and I know there's so many folks out there in the Fort Myers and other areas being over flooded. The huge disaster. Yeah. So we want to send a huge prayers to them and their families and our beautiful government officials who are coming together as a, as a family members. Right. We only come together when something happens. I wish we come together each and every day. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> so Winter Springs uh, citizens, again, you know, the November 8th is general elections. Please, uh, we're bringing another Winter Springs commissioner who is running for uh, District 4. He's a candidate. His name is Akeda uh, Rednik. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you for having and me. And sharing your knowledge. Uh, what's really wonderful, I'm your special host, Tiggy, from the RIM podcast. I post a forum on the res uh, Winter Spring residents, and I love to incorporate in the questions sure. from the residents. Right. So I always, I promise them I want to do that, and I, when I say something, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Love it. But before we jump to that, we got so many questions regarding the floods, the storms, the water system, the ponds and so on and on, and current leaderships and the city managers will discuss that just to let you know what the podcast is going to be about. Can you tell us a, bit, a little bit about yourself and why you even decide to run for the District 4 as uh, the Winter Springs Commissioner? Sure. So, um, you know, I lived in Winter Springs for a long time, okay. moved in in 2001, and I uh, got involved pretty soon after I got, I got into Winter Springs. Um, I was working as with a chamber in 2008, um, and so I got involved through the business to understood the business side of things. And there was a lot of issues, I guess you could say, at the time in 2008. And uh, with the help of quite a few other people, I was asked to run in 2008-9 to clean up a couple things and kind of build consensus. The economy had just turned down. Things were not great in our area. Stank. Oh, it was really bad. <laughs> and so I um, ran and I did win in 2010 to be a commissioner at that time. Good. And I sat on the dais and I worked with a lot of people. And what I really enjoyed doing is being with the people. I've always called myself a community candidate and being out there and hearing from people, discussing with people. You know, my, my path isn't this is how we're doing things. It's how do we as a community want to make mm -hmm. it all work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even at the time, 2010, I was there until 2018 and um, I worked really hard we worked on the park systems, we worked on the um, development in the city to the best of our abilities. I learned a lot. But the biggest thing was, you know, people would say, we don't want this. And, and I would say, to them, well, the law doesn't say no, but how do we work with it to make sure we have the best product we can get? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was me. Perfect, perfect. So now we'll <laughs> talk about certain investments, infrastructure, too. Uh, I don't want to go straight to directly questions. I want to concentrate the podcast. What the feedbacks we got from sure. the residents? Yeah. So again, you know, as a commissioner, should you encourage new building development? I want to go straight forward residents' questions. Yeah. Because it's upcoming. It. It's more. Yeah, it's more it. harder topics. Yeah. My first question: A lot of people complain about the consistent maintenance of our waterways, the ponds. The dredging and uh, impedes an over, uh, overflow inflow of the water system. Right. So, what is your take on, and especially after Hurricane Ion, we saw the huge, we never been flooded in Central Florida history, right. never experienced this. Right. Should we raise the water level of risk alert at a higher level or not, or should we go back and start to work with another cities? Winter Springs is an inner city. Right. So, we have to work with another, somewhere water has to mm -hmm. go out. Sure. So if our outside city didn't fix that, it doesn't matter what we do here. Right. So what's your take on it? You know, as a, what's your, what, 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 what you going to promise to the uh, Winter Spring citizen when you get in? How are you going to fix that? What's your plan? So to answer your question, continues from where I was a minute ago. So I told you I stepped down in 18. Mm -hmm. Well, we had just had Hurricane Irma at the time, and we learned a lot from Hurricane Irma. And one of the things that we had put in place was a full-on study of the waterways. Okay. So it was agreed upon in 17, it was funded for 18, and the study was supposed to be done in which we would look at Gee Creek, okay. see what needed to be done there, which the conclusion was we needed to dredge it yearly, and we would need to build a retaining wall along the communities that were there. Now let's say Castleberry, who's next to us, who has Lake Catherine, when that floods in, if we were dredged properly, we would have been fine. Okay. Let's continue going all the way down the city 
and you get to Howe Creek, which is on the other side of the city in, in Tuscaloosa area, mm -hmm. well, a lot of the creeks will flow. We would, that was part of the study. All the creeks were part of the study, and it was a lot of it was dredging, building wider, where we could build wider, and then where our waterways are supposed to, let's say, you know, our bridges right now are set up for three feet. Mm -hmm. Well, we would need to dredge further down, so we knew from Hurricane Irma what 14 inches look like. It's not sufficient. Right. We should have worked on the infrastructure then. Okay. So you ask the question, what would I do? And I, I've been very clear about this. We need to focus on the infrastructure. Okay. We need to go to our county, okay. to the state, and to the feds and say, this is our absolute thing we have to fix. Okay. Starting on the west side and moving all the way to the east side and get it all fixed. Wow, wow. Like I said, the storms, storms, nobody never predict a storm like this. And it's right. just like, unfortunately, there's a 5,000 homes being under flood and yep. $250 billion, uh, million dollars in damage. That's a huge for Seminole County. Yeah. Uh, we need to definitely do something. Underground power lines, I know some of our, uh, some of our fans, some of our resident uh, that lives there, he, she got a huge concerns. Mm -hmm. they, they call the current leaderships yeah. to clean certain things, and they have never done it. Right. Now, the area is still under flood. Yes. What would you do? What would you, what would, if you become an elected official, are you going to be in the reach and touch more with the residents? So, you know, I'll keep referring back to what I did in the past because I think my record speaks for itself. Okay. I'm the community person, and I used to have meetings, and I heard okay. this then. We did bury a lot of uh, um, power lines where we could bury them. Really what it is is it's opening conversations with Duke okay. and saying, where can we bury these lines? Okay. Where can we take the transformer stations or the transfer stations as, as the technology side of things look? Can we upgrade them? Can we take the lines down, bury it underground? What can we do? What is the cost? Can we as a city incur the costs? Do we go to the residents and the communities and say, what can we do to partner for the costs? But these are conversations we have. Yes. If we open lines of communication with the residents, open lines of communications with Duke, and that's our local partner for mm -hmm, technology, mm -hmm. And if needed, go to Tallahassee and open lines of communication there and say, let you know, it's 2022, let's bury lines. Okay. I know we have a lot of water issue with uh, yeah. uh, sewage as well. Oh, yeah. But the water issue, especially because the quality of the water needs to be, that's the number one thing, because we are drinking the water. Yes. And the body cannot function without the water. Yes. What is your take on that? Should, uh, should we have a conduct a different research on outside, or should they be conducted uh, separately? I don't know. I mean, I believe how they doing that was just doing now. One research company does the, the conduct the water. Should we just go back like we do in accounting when all of the uh, craziness get in accounting? Now you have to, right. after every two, three years, you have to have an outside right. accounting firm coming with no relationship whatsoever. Right. Should we do the same thing with city? Simple answer is yes. Okay. Um, if you want the long answer, um, it, it's funny because there's a group in Winter Springs that has been yelling for four years that our water needs to be changed, our water needs to be changed. But they're not the first ones. When I first joined the commission in 2010, there were people saying our water needed to be changed. But because of the downturn in the economy, we created a savings plan to change the water, okay. which technically should have been done in 21, 22, right about now. Mm -hmm. There was a study done in 18 for, from a company, which is a good company, who showed us how we could fix our water. Instead of doing that, the current commission threw everything out and said, we're going to do it our own way, which is fine, except when you choose to do it your own way, you sort of have to focus. Does that make sense? You have yes. to focus better yes. on what it means. So you master plan it. It takes too long. So they didn't do any of this. To answer your question again, do we get an outside company? Yes. We also include the DEP. And we don't just rely on the idea that we've got it right. Because mm -hmm. what's happened now with everything, now the commission, when they're up against people running against them, are saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we need to fix it, we need to fix it. Instead of saying that for the last four years, how are you going to fix it? What are we going to do? They were like, there's no problem, there's no problem. Okay, so we they see just the want problem. to fix before the election goes Exactly. Okay. So my other question is like, what are the most pressing needs for infrastructure and capital projects in the Winter Springs that you want to take on? First would be all of the creek areas. Okay. Get all of that fixed first of all. Get the roadways fixed, our bridges fixed. Um, I would go back to exactly where I started this campaign. We need our drinking water fixed. Okay. 100% we need our drinking water fixed. Then we need to go back and look. The city has started with the reclaimed facilities. 
They've said that they're they're done, but I would like to get a, another party, a third party outside to come in and look and see exactly what's mm -hmm. been done because they did burst and everything burst again during this hurricane. Water, drinking water, and then the last thing, there's many other things, but the last mm -hmm. thing I would do is take a look at the reclaimed pathing back into the communities so we never have to worry about the drinking water exceeding what's called our permittable use because you'll your communities would start sprinkling the grass with reclaimed water. Okay, great. So I know as uh, you are upcoming in elections, as LSA as a future commission of District 4, right. should encourage more building and development in the winter springs. I heard a lot of people say the thousand trees are cutting out. Should we cut them? Should not be cut? What is your take on that? Should we, that we already have the, the bacon property, should we invest in them? Should we develop another friend? Should we develop uh, apartments or not? A lot of people are against apartments. Mm -hmm. Some people are not against apartments, but it's a density. You know, we live yep. in the city, and then you have so much space to build, but people, influx of the people mm -hmm. coming in is more than what the land is can uh, absorb itself. Agreed. So it got to be a solution for something. What's your take on as, as a future commission of District 4? Future commission of District 4, here's what I'm going to say to you. No apartments. Okay. Okay. The land use is already at 92% residential. Okay. Which means as time moves on, there's not going to be an ability to, to deal with the taxes, tax base. Okay. We have to have a commercial tax base. For those of you who are listening down 434, the land that's open is available for use in a commercial environment. And that's 8%, right? What's that? That's 8%. Well, no, well right now we have 8% commercial. Okay. If we were to take the land that's left there and we actually develop it properly, that can be developed into positive commercial use. We can bring restaurants as we need to bring restaurants. We can bring small facilities like this beautiful facility that I'm in here now where there's, a, where there's a music facility or there's a, a, a place to where we could do a recording studio. We could have things in Winter Springs along our 434 pathway. Okay. And then... Once we get there, we need to take a look at what spaces are available. The area down 417, 434, where there was a concern about a Walmart recently, that area needs to be developed commercial. Okay. And the more we can do that, we can offset the tax base. Okay. We can make the people happy with that. Now, you asked about District 4. There's things we need to do in District 4 to make it look better. We need to update it. We need to redevelop it in certain areas. We need to put the money there to make it look so we have a consistent look throughout our city. Perfect. So putting money back to community and make Absolutely. the community better. So then exactly. my community is better, commissioners are better too. Right. So my most impressive question is the last question when you are looking up in the camera and convince the voters why they should vote for you. And it's your time now by putting in a hot spot. Put me in the hot spot? Yes. Well, folks, you know, as, I, as I've shared right here today, I'm here for you. I will be the person you call the community candidate. My number, you can reach me, is 407-687-1965. My email address, I'm in the community, I'm accessible. I'm one of those people who's happy to see you. I'll come where you need me to be, and I'm here to fix what needs to be fixed, hear what needs to be heard, and make Winter Springs the best version of Winter Springs. And also, I'm also willing to work outside of our city and build our communications outside of our city, go to the state where we need to go to the state, Meet the people we need to meet to get the best city we can have. Perfect. So, guys, now general elections are November 8th. Yep. Are here before you even know. It's time is flying, so please cast your votes. You heard about our special guest, and he's running for District 4. His name is Kate Resnick. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on our Thank show, you sharing me. your beautiful stories and what you're going to do for us once you get elected. And I hope right. you get there and you fix the city as... Uh, and like you said, collaboration with another right. leader from another city. So important. So we wish you the best. Thank you. We post all of the information. Uh, Appreciate please it. Please like, share, care. That's all we can do. Subscribe on our right. channel. Follow. We'll also post your uh, information so they can Appreciate follow it. you too yep. as well. We wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you so much I for being our you. guest. Absolutely. Thank you this for is our me. special host, special host Tiggy, special host episode uh, 59. Thank you so much. Care and share. And please stay safe, and uh, we wish you the best. We pray for all of the people who got uh, affected by the hurricane. We do. Thank you. Thank you, God everybody. bless you. That's it, man.